Hello, and welcome to the Legacy Instructional Series. I'm Splen from Legacy Fleet, and after an incredibly miserable 18 months, I'm back to update you on that ever so popular Star Citizen game mode, Racing. That's right, it's time for a new comprehensive guide. And my oh my, is it a wonderful time to get back on the track. But first, a preamble. With the advent of Star Citizen Patch 3.14, nearly everything about flying a ship has changed, from controls to components. So if you haven't already, I strongly recommend checking out the latest videos in the Legacy Instructional Series, breaking down the major changes. Believe me, there's a lot. Arena Commander Racing is one of the oldest game modes in Star Citizen. It has a low entry barrier, but a steep learning curve for mastery, making it appealing to all pilots' skill levels. Furthermore, racing is a great way to learn about and practice some of the more complicated aspects of piloting. This video will explain every aspect of racing so you can keep up with the pros. We'll cover ship selection and loadout, controls, track knowledge, racing technique, and advanced. A quick note before we get started, this video only covers Arena Commander Racing, not any of the other racing modes that may or may not be in the game by the time you're viewing this, nor does it cover any interesting events or contests in the PU. Not that I'd know anything about that. However, that's certainly not to say that the techniques and advice explained here can't be used elsewhere. On the contrary, racing is an incredibly handy way to get to know your ship, as well as flight mechanics, which can come in handy nearly everywhere. What makes a good racing ship? Star Citizen narrows down the choices by marking certain ships as designed for racing, such as the Mustang Gamma, the Mist Razor, and the Origin M50. However, ship specifications vary from patch to patch, so you'll have to do a little research to figure out which ship is the best. Load up your favorite ship comparison tool and get ready to take some notes. In order of importance, here are the most desirable stats of a good racing ship. Forward thrust. Forward thrust creates forward acceleration, which is obviously important in racing. Compared to all other thrusters on a racing ship, the main thrusters provide the most directional thrust out of all other thrusters by a considerable margin, making them often the most ideal thrusters to use for adjusting a ship's vector of motion. Of course, you need to change where these thrusters are pointing in order to adjust your motion vector correctly, which brings us to our next most important stat, turning thrust. Turning thrusters drive the pitch and yaw of your ship for a beginner and intermediate racer, the yaw thrusters are marginally more important, but both directions will become critical as you advance. Next is backward thrust. Backward or retro thrusters are used almost as often as forward thrust in a race. The more powerful these thrusters are, the less time you need to break before a tight turn. Finally, strafing thrust. This is controlled by thrusters that move your ship laterally and vertically along your ship's rotational vector. Depending on the patch, these thrusters may be more or less important as the flight model changes. We'll cover their usage in the advanced section at the end of the video. Racing Guide regulars may have noticed a few glaring changes here since patch 3.8. In the previous racing guide, I stressed the importance of cooling efficiency. While that's certainly still very important, it's not exactly difficult to meet the heat demands of your ship as of 3.14, and much of the engine overheat has been completely removed in most ships. In fact, just find the smallest, lightest cooler you can find and put it on. You might not even need two coolers for a stripped-down racer. If you're not sure, experiment a bit or consult some popular data tools to ensure you'll have just enough ice in your freezer without tipping the scales. Also, you might have noticed that top speed isn't even on the list this time. This is because, overall, thrusters have been considerably weakened since 3.8, especially non-forward thrusters. This means that going even half your ship's top speed is pushing things to the limit, 
as your braking thrusters won't have the time to compensate and properly change your vector. As of 3.14, the ship with the best stats according to the list I described remains the OJM-50. If you don't have the best ship for a particular patch, use your judgment and pick the best possible ship that you own for this purpose. Now that you've picked a good ship, go to Arena Commander and edit the ship's loadout. In general, remove everything from your ship that's not going to be used in racing. This includes shields, guns, missiles and racks, quantum drive, and possibly more items as the game develops. As I mentioned earlier, you're going to need at least one cooler to prevent your components from becoming paperweights. Check your favorite Star Citizen data sheets to see which coolers are the best for your ship's component size. So why do these loadout changes matter? The point is that it might not matter at all. And indeed, in some patches it made a difference, and in some it did not. A better question to ask is why not? In a truly realistic scenario, unneeded components only add extra weight to your ship and could potentially take power or heat sinking away from thrusters, which will negatively affect your racing. There's no harm in taking these components off, so do so, if possible. Before jumping into racing, you should have some familiarity with how flight controls work for the current patch. For ship thruster control, we're going to stick to a general rule. Analog controls are better. This means that joysticks, pedals, and throttles will give you far more precise control over your ship's movement than keyboard keys or other digital buttons. Your most important analog bindings, if possible, should be your ship's pitch, yaw, and forward-backward thrust. The most common choices to achieve this are a dual joystick or joystick and throttle setup, but ultimately, the choices boil down to preference. You should have the boost button bound to a key that can be reached at all times, such as a joystick trigger or thumb button. You may also want to bind an easy-to-reach button to toggle weapons and shield systems if you can't remove these components from your ship entirely. Finally, it's probably a very good idea to bind a button, or maybe a few buttons, to move your capacitor power fully to engines. Don't know what capacitor power is? That's because it's a brand new feature in 3.14. We'll cover this extensively in the Technique section. As of patch 3.14, there are three racing tracks in Arena Commander. Old Vanderval is a quick race with gradual, easy turns and is good for beginners. It takes about a minute to get through it once you get good. Rikerd Memorial takes about a minute and a half to get through and has some significantly sharper turns with more obstacles than Old Van. Finally, Defford Link is a whopper of a track that takes around two and a half minutes to get through. It has a little bit of everything, from nasty, sharp turns with deadly consequences to enormous, gradual NASCAR loops that will test your G-Force and speed management. All of these tracks have been in the game for years with very little changes, and as such, there's a lot of shortcuts and tricks to getting the best times on each. At first, take things slow. Load up the races in single player and explore. Get used to the track and gradually speed things up. It's also a really good idea to watch good racers. Get involved with a racing org or just hang out in Arena Commander multiplayer and try to keep up with the pros. You can learn a lot about the best routes and ships just by observing others. Now that we've got the basics covered, we're going to start getting into the finer points of racing. By now, you should have taken a few laps on each track and picked your best racing ship and components. Your controls, as well as the current flight model, are very comfortable to you. Without any additional help, you are able to get through the three tracks in the times I mentioned in the last section. And now, you're ready to push yourself to the limit. First things first, turn off G-Safe, which is a setting that limits your ship's thrust to keep your pilot from losing vision or passing out. This is done in the options menu or by a toggle switch. I recommend having it off all the time. Why? The built-in system is too heavy-handed and will hinder your flying once you get really good, and a good pilot can manage their G-Force exposure manually. Check out this video from Legacy Instructional Series that offers ways to manage G-Forces correctly. Once you've got G-Safe off, get used to the tracks again.
because it's going to probably feel a bit different. Practice managing your G-force exposure around the crazy turns while keeping on track. You'll find yourself rolling the ship in different ways and having to get used to seeing the track from different angles. Take your time, and once you feel comfortable again, we'll move on to the next point. Now, let's talk for a moment about speed management. As of 3.14, you could limit your speed with a toggle and set a maximum directional velocity for your ship. As I mentioned earlier in the video, you're probably never going to hit max speed in your ship in Arena Commander Racing, and if you do, you're probably doing something very wrong and are going to really overshoot your next turn. To mitigate this, you can use the speed limiter, but I advise against it. Why? It's another subsystem you need to fine-tune while racing, and believe me when I say you want your attention focused elsewhere. My advice is to turn off the speed limiter completely in the options menu. Instead of using the limiter, practice managing your speed by learning the course and getting a feel for the track and your ship. Certain turns can be tackled at different speeds. Practice and patience will pay off immensely. Your many thrusters on the ship, especially your forward thrusters, are your best tools for managing your velocity. However, you need to be able to turn the ship as fast as possible to do this with the most efficiency. To do this, use multiple maneuvering thrusters simultaneously to change both your velocity vector and rotational vector faster, which can help prevent you from overshooting turns. Check out this video from Legacy Instructional Series detailing why and how you should use multiple thrusters in a combined turn. For the next point, we're going to talk about where your eyes should be when they're not looking at the speedometer. Most of the time, you're going to be looking at where your total velocity indicator is in relation to the track. That's this little thing right here. There are actually two of them, one showing your front vector and one showing the rear vector. Obviously, we're more interested in the front-facing one. The TVI shows what direction your ship is currently moving in, regardless of where your nose is pointing. You want to use your thrusters to keep the TVI from pointing at obstacles, because that means you're going to crash into that obstacle. You should be directing the TVI around turns and through the next checkpoint ring. Doing this can be challenging when you're trying to use your ship's main thrusters to cut a fast turn, which can cause the TVI to be out of your field of view momentarily. When you can't see your TVI, you don't know exactly where you're going, and that can lead to disaster. So how do we mitigate this? As of patch 3.14, there are a few ways. Adjusting your FOV to be very large and getting a nice, wide monitor certainly helps and is the most comfortable option for newer pilots. As you get better at racing, you'll find that this is still not enough for some extreme situations. One way to fix this is to use the look ahead options in the settings menu. The slider you'll be most interested in is the velocity vector. Slide this to the desired level and also slide the other ones to lower settings or off completely you will find that your pilot's head will now constantly try to track the velocity vector, which will be jarring at first, but soon you'll get used to it. But before you do, there's one more option to consider, head tracking. Now we're getting a little complex, since there's multiple hardware solutions applicable here, such as infrared tracking, the built-in facewear solution, Toby eye tracking, or even virtual reality headsets for those immune to nausea. How you approach this is up to you, as there's also an incredible amount of settings to adjust, but once you have a comfortable head tracking solution in place, it is hands down the most accurate way to track the velocity indicator, and also gives you full control of the pilot's head, which can be used to track multiple things at once more efficiently. Now, I'm not going to commit to saying that head tracking or even look ahead is 100% needed as sufficient track knowledge and extreme practice can mitigate collisions pretty effectively. For those that prefer the static view, here's some points to consider. If you can't track the TVI manually or automatically, doing lateral turns will help keep it on your screen, as monitors are wider than they are tall. Remember, however, that your fastest turns require both up-down and left-right directional thrusters to fire at once, so your overall turns will be slower when using only lateral turns. Also, even if you're using head tracking, consider this. 
In some cockpits, there can be huge blind spots. Keep these facts in mind when planning a turn, as your TVI can drift to your blind spots if you turn in certain directions, leaving you unaware of what's in your ship's path. Next, we'll get a little deeper into boosting and boost fuel management. As of patch 3.14, boosting, which was previously sometimes called afterburning, is critical to your success as a pilot. As your ship's thrusters become much more powerful when boosting, you can change velocity and direction about twice as fast while using afterburners. However, using boosts for sustained periods uses boost fuel, which can take a while to recharge. But thankfully, there's a pretty easy way to get the most out of your boost fuel. Allow me to explain. Patch 3.14 introduced huge changes to the way the MFD power triangle functions in-game, and it's now absolutely essential to put all capacitor power to engines for arena commander racing. That's the bottom icon of the triangle, in case it wasn't perfectly clear somehow. At the time of this video's production, doing this one simple trick gives the ship a passive boost fuel consumption reduction, as well as increased boost fuel recharge speeds. There are tons of bindings for this improved feature, so just make sure that no matter how you do it, you get full power to engines as soon as you spawn in the race, and every time you respawn. With practice, you could manage boost fuel efficiently in a race by learning what parts of a track benefit from boosting, and which parts could do without. While planning your strategies, keep in mind these three extremely important facts about boost fuel. One. When you hold down your boost button, your boost fuel is going to start draining at a constant rate, no matter the amount of thrusters that are currently burning, and no matter how much they are burning. The implication here is that it's best to use your boost when you're going to get the absolute most out of it, such as when drastically changing your vector using a combined overturn. 2. When you let go of the boost button, there's always a cooldown before it starts recharging, and if you hit the boost button again during that cooldown, the cooldown will start over when you release the button again. That means that feathering the boost button might not be the best option. Instead, it's probably better to plan very decisive boost durations at specific turns. And finally, three, boosting also increases your rotational speed. These three facts combined bring to light an obvious strategy. Boosting is best used in a turn which in Arena Commander Racing means the period of time directly before and immediately after flying through one of the checkpoint loops, and sometimes even in other situations, depending on the track. Finally, let's talk a bit about death. In the racing game mode, you're going to tear wings off of your ship and sometimes smash components and thrusters without blowing up. This can be problematic to your performance, and since there's no pit stops or repair opportunities, it's probably better to just kill yourself. It sounds shocking and morbid, but as of patch 3.14, self-destructing is nearly instantaneous in Arena Commander Racing, making your death and subsequent miraculous resurrection in a brand new ship quick and painless. Self-destruction can also be much better for your overall race time if you veer too far off course. Get this button bound to something easy to reach because you'll be committing ship seppuku very often. At last, the final section of this tutorial has arrived. Before continuing, practice all the points covered in the last section. By now, you're feeling like Space Jeff Gordon. You're the envy of your entire org, and you frequently win in multiplayer. You deliver the tofu, and it's piping hot. You don't spill your drink around turns. You're able to easily surpass the racing times I mentioned earlier in the video, and you're looking for absolutely every little edge you can get in order to shave off milliseconds. Well, look no further. You're probably wondering why I mentioned strafing thrusters at the beginning of the video and then completely ignored them. That's because they're largely unimportant when you're just learning the ropes. But now that you're in the section called Advanced, it's time to unlock their uses. By default, when your ship is in coupled control mode, your strafing thrusters automatically fire and try to move the velocity indicator to where your ship's nose is pointing. This motion dampening is mostly sufficient and helpful during a race, but not always. You can manually fire your strafing thrusters to fine-tune where the TVI should go, which is especially helpful if you want to adjust rotational vector and velocity vector in different directions at the same time. 
I find myself doing this quite often, especially to get a head start on the rotational vector needed to pull off a really dramatic turn. This, of course, takes lots of practice, but the benefits of unlocking such power are worth the effort. You can also strafe in the opposite direction of G-stress in order to help mitigate G-forces if you can't rotate the ship fast enough. While this is an emergency situation that is often detrimental to your racing time, it could stop your pilot from passing out. Finally, what happens if you completely turn off automatic strafing thrusters? This is called decoupled mode. You can switch between coupled and decoupled mode with a keybind, and for racing, you'll probably want it as a hold rather than a toggle, since you should only be decoupled for small amounts of time, unless you're an unchained god who can race with only manual thruster control. But for us mortals, this technique can be helpful in certain situations. For example, if you're approaching a sharp turn and have your TVI lined up perfectly, you can decouple to keep your TVI steady while turning the ship, then recouple at a precise time to start thrusting toward your next checkpoint. Keep in mind that while you're decoupled, unless you're firing thrusters manually, you will not be slowing down at all, making it easy to accidentally overshoot turns. I personally do not use decoupled at all as of 3.14, but plenty of really good racers do. And now we have reached the end of the Legacy Instructional Series racing tutorial. Be free and experience the thrill of motion sickness, a stiff neck, and sore wrists for countless hours of non-stop practice as your significant other, pets, and or children wonder if you'll ever be seen again. But when you careen through the finish line at insurance-defying speeds, you'll know that your journey was worth it. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, learning to race has served me well in other aspects of Star Citizen, such as combat and even emergency navigation of larger ships. You can cut turns faster, save fuel, and outmaneuver your foes with your superior understanding of vector control. And who knows, maybe one day we'll get to actually race as a career path in-game. If that day comes, you'll be ready, because you were here. Go now, my friend, and prevail.